Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Specialist Mobile Application Tester. We are in chapter three and we are talking about test types and test process for mobile applications. So far, we are done with all the tutorials and topics to be discussed as a part of this particular series. Now it's time to get into the sample questions of this particular chapter. And the very first thing we'll be getting started with is sample question pattern. When it comes to the sample question pattern, of course, we have got a lot of questions coming on from this particular chapter. A total of 11 questions will be displayed or you know asked to you during this examination. So make sure that you have an equal weightage coming up from the two and the three and adding a lot of value to your overall examination score. So equally, when it comes to the K2 part, there are a lot many questions. So there will be six questions out of 11 at K2. There will be three of them at K1, which are basic fundamentals and uh, one pointers. And there are even exactly two uh, K3 questions, which will be from any of these topic, which are displayed here. So all want to highlight that don't be just limited to K1 and K2. Make sure that you do prepare for K3. And there will be a lot of questions on the K2. So understanding part is very important for the entire chapter with applying certain things back into the action. In order to get started, the very first question we are looking at is which two of the following are potential security issues for mobile application? And that's coming up from the very first test level, which we conduct is the security testing for mobile application testing. We discussed about the very first topic where we understood how exactly the security issues can be tested and covered as a part of the same. Now, Again, just to quickly highlight that not every time you will have an opportunity to make sure that you know you identify the two questions, that uh, the two options need to be selected, but they will certainly give you the heads up that how many options need to be selected. So either way, just keep a track of it. Even if you can't follow that, then remember, whenever you see options more than four for a given question, please look back at the question because they'll be asking you two to select. Generally, you get four options, but when it comes to selecting two options, you will have five options provided to you in order to answer them. Okay, so please be careful with those observations because a lot of the time people go wrong with selecting partial answers, which is not correct. Okay, they don't get partial marks to you. They just give you either right or wrong. So make sure that you select both options. Let's look at the answer set of this particular question. We have got code injection via input fields and uh, that's one of the thing which is security concerned, okay? And uh, the second one is B, data being transferred unencrypted, which is again, encryption and decryption is a security point of view. So even this is related to the security concern. So you need to be, I think the very first option itself is telling you the right answer, but we just wanna confirm that is our assumptions correct by validating the other three options and justifying that why they are not correct. So coming to see app not responding after interruptions. Now this is uh, app not responding after interruption is more of an operational failure rather than a security issue. Don't forget that security issues are related to your authentication, you know, talking about your encryption of the password or talking about the code injection like a spam and other things. So all those things are security related. So C is not a relevant option for security issues. Rendering issues after changing device orientations. Now that's again different. It's not a security issue because it is related to the orientation part of it, which we covered in the chapter two. And we uh, discussed about that, that these are the test condition which need to be taken as a part of the functional testing. And E, overlap of the screen elements on small screens. Overlaps again is a functional parameter. So it is a security, it's not a security concerns as this uh, related to how exactly the resolution is considered when you talk about apps being displayed on a mobile devices. So finally, putting up together, the right answer is A, code injection via input fields, and B, data being transferred unencrypted, which are both related to security concerns. Moving into the next one, uh, the question number two, you are tasked with carrying out a usability test for a mobile application. Which of the following is a step that you will not perform? Again, these are very tricky options when they use the word like not, true, false, best, most. So make sure that you keep a special eye on such words because a lot of the time it happens that 
uh, the exam, uh, you know, during the examination, as you are generally tensed, then you ignore such words to be read before picking up the right answer. So it will just sometimes say back, you know, that, okay, most of the options are looking correct. Why? Because you didn't read the question clearly. They're asking you then one that option, which does not relate to usability. So let's pick up the options here. A, ask the manager to order a usability lab session. Now this, uh, you know, because of course, you know, lab sessions are something which is crucial to conduct a usability test. So you would certainly have usability labs in place organized or prepared in order to conduct the usability test and take the necessary feedback. Text, uh, coming to B, test the app to check compliance with platforms or user interface guidelines. Again, whenever you talk about user interface, which is completely a part of the usability testing, and of course, that goes with the inline objective of usability testing. So test the app to check compliance with the user interface guidelines if there are any which you are following. So yes, this is also an activity to be carried out as a part of usability of mobile application. Coming to the C, C has activate the voiceover feature of the device. I think that's something which is not relevant to usability because uh, this is not a necessary step to be con uh, conducted as a part of usability testing. Activate the voiceover feature, that is a functionality issue. Will I be able to activate it or not? If it doesn't function, that's different. But even if you say activate voiceover as a kind of you know feature in terms of uh, helping out user to utilize the app, this is accessibility. Accessibility deals with voice to text or speech to text kind of concept, not usability. Usability is all about user friendliness of an application, whereas accessibility is all about if people with different ability can access the app or not. Coming to the option D, learn about the look and feel expectations of the platform. Of course, that's a very standard part or parameter of usability testing. So D is also included in that. But now we are talking about the one option which is incorrect as per usability. The right answer is C, activate the voiceover feature of the device, which is an accessibility option, not usability. Moving forward to the third question, you are a tester in a team developing a mobile application. Your team has finished the current version of the app and has related, released it to the application store. Which of the following is your next activity? Now, I think very straightforward answer for this because you know that what happens uh, post-release and what all need to be done at this point of time. So you have published the app into the application store. You have to download and install it and do some quick tests to make sure that after doing it from a real store, does it really function appropriately or not? So I think we do have a great answer, straightforward, but still, A, we talk about archiving testware. Archiving testware is test closure activity, which is done quite later once the project is completed. And uh, this is not, or which is after post-release testing, not exactly during the post-release, or something which, you know, uh, that has done something at the point of, you know, uploading the content or the app on the store. So your project is still going on till it is finally published and released to everyone. So archiving testware is when you, once you have the successful launch of it and you complete the post-release testing. So B is post-release testing. Of course, that's the one which you think is the right answer. So we will be looking into that, but let us just confirm with the other two option uh, so that we don't have any confusion. C, application store approval testing, which happens prior to uploading the app onto the application store because these things should be checked before sending it to the submission, not after submission. But as per your scenario, it says that it is already submitted to the application store. And the test closure, which is of course the last activity to be conducted. And uh, this is not done during the post-release activities. These are done after that. Once the post-release activities are completed and successful, then you will co come to the test closure and do the archiving of the testware. So putting it all together, your right answer here is B, post-release testing, which is done once the app is uploaded into the application store. Well, that was all from this particular chapter team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. We'll be getting started with chapter four in our next tutorial, so stay tuned for that. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.